I want to talk about some of the cognitive issues I face having schizophrenia while I'm having some cognitive issues. And I'll do my best to explain that right now. Welcome to Surviving Schizophrenia. My name is Steven. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So this will be kind of hard for me to explain, considering I am having some cognitive issues right now. But I'll do my best, because it's not too bad to the point where I don't think I can. Um, I guess, like, I wanted to record a video about 10 minutes ago. And I was getting all prepared for it, and then my mind just kind of went blank. So now I'm recording this video. It's hard to explain the cognitive issues I face, but I'll do my best. Uh, I guess the biggest one would be brain fog, where I'm trying to think of stuff and I just can't, or it takes me longer to. It's difficult. It's it's hard to explain when you just can't get the right word that you want to get, say, for example, or able to do actually most things where I wanted to record this video. I was all prepared all of a sudden, though. It hit me and I was like, well, getting a little bit stressed out. And I can't really remember what I was going to say. That's how it started this time, about literally 10, 10, 15 minutes ago. And it stopped me from being able to make that video. And I really wanted to as well, and I still will, but it'll take some time for me to get out of this fog, for lack of a better word. And it's not like it hurts or anything, and it's not necessarily that much more stressful for me. I did say I was getting stressed. That was because I wanted to record, and I couldn't. Um, but it is... It can be a little eerie, I guess. For example, sometimes I'll just completely go blank and it'll take me a bit to get back to what I was even trying to think of. It happens a lot at night where it's like, oh, I'll be thinking of something, okay, tomorrow I'm really going to do this. Or I really want to do this or whatever it is. And a second goes by and I'm like, what was I thinking about? I don't know. Usually I can't remember what I was thinking about, and that thought is just gone. And that's part of the cognitive issues I face with schizophrenia. It's also, like, I've, I'll get words combined, not just when I'm saying them, but when I'm thinking them. This is going to be so cool, right? I'll think, but I'll be thinking, this is going to be so cool. That doesn't make sense, but it, in my mind, it's the combination of both words I wanted to think, or sometimes say, usually think. And these cognitive issues aren't necessarily like, they don't stop me from doing stuff in my life, but they definitely impede my ability to act like I normally would, I guess. This is really hard to explain, actually. I hope maybe at least it's coming across in the video that it's just hard for me to get my thoughts together without really trying to focus on exactly what I'm trying to think. I think that also is partly because my mind's always racing and I'm thinking about like a million and one things at once. Which one I'm having these cognitive issues and they're more pronounced. It can be harder because of that. And then sometimes like they all just go away but it's like I was still thinking of them, even though they're not there. Those thoughts where it's like, it feels like I'm thinking about a million and one things when I'm not. But it makes it hard like it were to think or to say things. I hope that makes sense. And I hope I'm putting this together well. <laughs> it is difficult when I'm having these cognitive issues. This very well is probably a focus issue as well. It is already difficult for me to focus on one thing, for example, or one conversation or one task. 
uh, I always try, I'm always thinking of multiple things, like I said, you know, so not being able to focus on one thing makes it harder to do anything, right? And so, like, I'm always doing multiple things, like I said, so I'll be playing a game, but I'm also watching a YouTube video. I'm always multitasking. And I guess when I have, uh, well, that's really a focus issue there because I can't just pay attention to one thing. Uh, for example, if I see a squirrel outside, I get completely distracted no matter how serious the conversation might be that I'm having with someone. And I'm like, hey, look, a squirrel. Or if it is that serious, I'll try to think that in my mind and try to focus on what was being said. And that's not great. And that's kind of rude, too, honestly. And I am trying to work on that, but... That, I think that's also a focus issue where I just, I can't focus on just one thing. And as for why I have always doing multiple things, that's mainly due to my stress and anxiety, uh, which also makes cognitive issues worse. But I find um, one thing usually doesn't distract me enough from my anxiety and my depression and my stress that I have to watch a YouTube video while, or a comedy show while playing a game. Because otherwise I'm not distracted enough for my stresses. And I mean, it works for me to have a lot. But I need that much distraction usually to not be too stressed out. So like I said, I'll always be doing multiple things at a time. I'll be watching a movie and I'll be playing a game on my phone. And I do this, right, to relieve my stress. But a lot of people turn to like mindfulness and they'll try to do the exact opposite of that. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Hold up. They'll try to, this is how I figure out when I'm having these issues. Um, yeah, so mindfulness and usually you would then stop Take time for yourself and your own thoughts. And that personally doesn't work for me. It definitely can work for others. I get that. But for me, it it's not a distraction. And for me, I feel I need those distractions to keep my mind off my stresses. If I focus on, or even try not to focus, but just take that time without doing anything else, without listening to music, for example, or watching something or playing a game, I find my stress level goes up. For me, being alone with my thoughts and trying to focus on them and stuff like that in a positive way doesn't work because it just turns negative for me. Of course, it can definitely work for others, and I get mindfulness. It can be great. and Not just mindfulness, but like that kind of... It's just hard to shoot this video right now. Please bear with me. Meditation, that's what I was trying to think of. How that can um, really help people. Personally, it doesn't work that well for me. I've talked to my dad about this, and while well, I guess for me, right, I have to have this kind of stimulus and always be doing something, that that's not how it works for a lot of people, where usually it would be you do the complete opposite to relax and wind down. I can't quite explain why exactly it is for me, except that that's what I've done and that's what's worked for me. And I find that being alone with my thoughts just stresses me out more than doing something and not dwelling on my thoughts. Not that my thoughts are always like negative or anything, but if I'm alone just thinking, I will think back on my past. I will think back on more negative stuff might not all be negative, but I'll be thinking about stuff that's happened in the past, for example, and that'll stress me out because I'll think about maybe something I did and now I can't do that anymore or that person or something and now they're not in my life or something like that. Gosh, my train of thought is going. Uh, give, me, give me a sec. My dad has also said that it's very possibly due to trauma. Uh, with traumatic events, you generally don't, well, I, I don't think at least, 
that you would want to dwell on that, right? You wouldn't want to take your time and think it through. You'd want to do something else to take your mind off it instead of dwelling on those thoughts because I could just make it worse. And maybe in your mind, like for me, bring you back to, or bring me back to those times where I was really stressed out or not doing well. And that doesn't help me now thinking about it from the past in that way. That said, for example, for me, making these videos, when I've talked about it, has been very cathartic. And that sounds counterintuitive, but I don't have a good answer for that, actually. Maybe it's because, I'm thinking this now, maybe it's more controlled. You know, I'm like in a safe environment here. I'm not just dwelling on the thoughts from then. I'm working through it now instead of putting myself back then. That makes sense. So I think that's why that works like that for me. I remember way back when, when I was first falling ill, I would see, well, I guess I saw a few therapists, but there's one in particular. And I don't remember what we talked about exactly. Actually, all I remember of her was that she had really good tea in her waiting room. That's how stressful things got for me in her room when I was doing the talk therapy with her. And talk therapy hasn't worked for me. Talking through, like, being psychotic and talking through all these difficult times and emotions and feelings and all that doesn't help me personally. That's why I don't dwell on my thoughts, because that talking it over or thinking it over does not help for me. It just makes it worse and makes it feel like it's happening again. And that just doesn't work well for me, like, at all. So talk therapy has never worked well for me for that reason. And that's also why I don't dwell on my thoughts for the very same reason. And after I got back into school, school, uh, I had a teacher come here, really, is what it was for a while. And then even when I... To the house here, sorry. And even when... Um, I was going to an actual school. I had a therapist provided by the school district for me. She would come here to the house, um, take me out places, and also would even go to that school when I started going to that school after I stopped being homeschooled. And um, I don't really remember a lot of what we did. I do remember it was less talking and more of just getting me to do stuff. I remember we'd go to like, and actually with my teacher, a homeschool teacher as well, she would go with us too, amazing people. And we'd go to like the store, for example, which I would still get very stressed out. And I had a very stressful experience at a Whole Foods. I don't remember a lot of it. I just remember we had gone inside maybe five minutes probably a little longer and I was just it was too much for me all the being there all the stimulus all the people around me I felt like everyone was watching me thinking about me and gonna maybe do something and that was too much for me to handle so I had to go back outside and they got me some water and some... that was not a good experience but in general it wasn't therapy like talking it was therapy and getting me out to do stuff which overall aside from that one experience was good and helped instead of just sitting talking about it. Also, I want to add real quick. Uh, I think my cognitive issues are wearing off a bit now. Uh, part of what can be good for that kind of thing, if possible, right, is to use your brain. And that's what I'm doing right now. And I think it's coming back. So I'm happy about that. And it's also on a side note, part of why I like strategy games so much, games like Sid Meier's Civilization, I always loved that, mainly after, like, right when I fell ill. It allowed me to use my brain and actually think when I otherwise wouldn't have. And that was great. And now I'm losing my train of thought, but for a different reason, because I'm excited and I want to go play Civ later. But, um, right, yeah. So, yeah, my mood even is left, is getting better and... I mean, I, I think my cognitive issues are getting a little better right now because I've been talking about this. And talking in that regard can help. And using my brain has helped. 
and the, like I've said, like playing strategy games helped me a lot to keep my brain sharp when I wasn't learning anything new otherwise, when I wasn't really even talking to many people when I was really ill and just had fallen ill, even before those uh, teacher and that um, therapist had started coming over, right? I would just be at home alone, not alone, sorry, at home alone in this room, essentially, parents here, obviously, but uh, playing games. And I just got drawn to strategy games for some reason, but it was good because that allowed me to use my brain, which I'm sure helped with the cognitive issues I was facing then. And it may have been worse even now had I not used my brain more. I should probably have said this when I was talking about the Whole Foods incident, but that was about seven years ago, maybe a little more now. So that's definitely not recent. Um, I have been able to go to stores for a few years now and have not been a real issue. Mostly in the last two, I'd say it's not an issue anymore going to stores. So that was a, a long while ago when I was far more ill. I just far more ill. And actually, I've received a comment recently from one of you community members of mine. My community. One of the members of our community is what I'm trying to say. Uh, saying pretty much like how I deal with that kind of anxiety and going out to stores and places outside. And... I guess it's really just trying not to think about it too much. When I was really ill, I'd always overthink things, like thinking that everyone was thinking of me. For example, if I walked past someone, they're talking to their friend. They're not thinking about me, they're talking to their friend, but in my mind, I was like, they're talking about me. They might glance at me, and I'll be like, they're looking at me, they're thinking about me, they're going to say something about me, they're going to do something, and also just extra noises that actually still stresses me out having a lot of noises like if I'm at a restaurant for example that's hard for me because not only do I hear like noises like people eating and uh, forks and knives hitting a plate for example uh, sometimes people eat you with their mouth open and that bothers me more or chew gum all that adds to my stress and for a while, I didn't want to leave home for that reason, because I can control most of what happens in my house. But if I leave and I go somewhere, I can't control that necessarily. I have to, well, I I just, I have no control there. So that stresses me out more in the past. It's gotten far better now. But I think that's why I had issues going places in the past, because I couldn't control it. And there was a lot more happening there a lot more stimulus a lot more just anxiety provoking things and for how it got better i you know honestly i don't really know for sure i know time helped time as i recovered like i said trying to realize no one's caring what i'm doing no one's thinking about me when i'm out shopping for example uh, in the past, going to the store like with someone, like with my cousin, for example, that helped because I'd be doing stuff with him and I just felt more comfortable, for example. Other than that, I'm not exactly sure what exactly changed, just that it did. With time and I guess also kind of training myself to realize no one's thinking about me or saying stuff about me. It's just they're saying something to whoever they're talking to, and that has nothing to do with me. And come to think of it, one other uh, activity, I guess, that I've been doing that has helped with me getting out in general has been walking, specifically, like, just around my neighborhood. And I started doing that, I don't know, like a year ago now or so, and maybe less, more so recently. I am still under the weather and sick. I can't tell from my voice, so I have not been exercising for the past week or so. But before that, I'd go walking a lot. And I'd have to walk past people in my neighborhood. And generally, I'd say, like, hi, how's it going, right? Something like that. Or just walk past them, depending on what they're doing and stuff. So just that little interaction with people has helped me go to, like, stores and places like that. Because then... I've already interacted, even albeit a very small amount, with some people around my neighborhood. That just helps because then I'm 
out around people and get more acclimated to that. I think that's why also I've been able to go to like stores and uh, for example, like it used to be hard for me to pay if I were to buy something. I'd I wouldn't be able to hand over the cash myself. I'd have to have my dad do it, for example, or my mom. Um, forgot where I was going with that now, but all of that being out more. Well, I mean, you just get used to it, and then all of a sudden you can be out more because you're used to it, and like, like, that's the best way I can explain it. Just for me, getting out more allows me to be more comfortable in other places where there might be more people even. I can't say I always enjoy getting out still. I feel definitely like I'm a homebody now. Not anywhere near as much as I was even three years ago, but it's not my favorite thing to go places. I'm much more comfortable and much happier here at home in general. However, like when my cousin comes over, for example, um, we'll usually go get like breakfast and go to the mall and stuff. And I enjoy that. Sure, it's hard for me to be around people eating and all of the stresses that come with it, but I still enjoy that. And that's not something I enjoyed. Well, I enjoyed with my cousins and I was enjoyed with my family, but that was something that I wouldn't be anywhere near as comfortable doing before, but I enjoy it more now as I have recovered. A lot of people enjoy taking vacations and trips to new places and seeing new sites, and I don't really like that. I just don't. Unless it's for family. I've gone and even made videos about going to Texas and visiting my dad's side of the family there and my little cousins and my older cousins and my aunt and my uncle and that I enjoy, but I don't personally feel really any need to go places to go places unless it's for family. That is something that has changed since I felt ill with schizophrenia because before then, yeah, I would have loved to go like I don't know, I want to go, want to go like Australia. I've gone to Hawaii in the past. I loved it. Vegas. I might enjoy that more now that I'm older, but uh, I was little when I went to Vegas. I can do a lot of stuff there, but. I guess also, I, I just, I don't feel a need to do that anymore. Again, unless it's with family, and I don't know. I guess I actually don't know more about that and why that is. It's just, like I said, I'm more comfortable here at home or around family, and that's the only time I really feel a need to go places for, like, a vacation or something, because I don't feel like I'd have much fun going to the Great Barrier Reef right now. That said, unless it was with family, for example. So that was, well, started with cognitive issues that I face having schizophrenia. Uh, I hope it was interesting seeing <laughs> that change and it actually lift in real time. I didn't actually expect it to lift, but that's cool to know that I can overcome those cognitive issues that quickly. I didn't actually realize that would happen. And I ended up talking about a lot of other stuff too. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm definitely feeling a lot better now. Not that I was that stressed out before, but like I said, you know, I was having some brain fog and not being able to think as clearly, but that is definitely cleared up now, as you can probably tell. Feels good. And I'm happy to have you here, and I hope to see you all in the next video.